All right, <clears throat> so we're in our 2011 and we're having problems. I just cleared the codes. So now we can see that our variators are all shown a duty cycle. When the code triggers, these go to zero, the intake ones. Locks them. Uh, we can see that our camshaft position sensors are both reading 75, our engine coolant 69. So we're gonna go ahead and start it and see what it does. There she locked up. Now you can see that our intake variators went to zero. Uh, our cam position sensors are still, you know, staying one to two apart. So this is when it's cold. You can see the engine coolant temperature's coming up, 84. So what I'll do is I'll drive it around and uh, get it warmed up and then we'll reset the code and then see what she looks like after I reset the code. Okay, so I just warmed up the car, pulled off side of the road, reset the code, or erased the code. You can see we're reading our intake duty cycles again. Uh, we got all this. You can see our car temperatures at the bottom, 166. So we'll go ahead and start it. This is bank two, this is bank one for the intake. Bank one's the one we're having problems with, so that's 77.8. So it's a little bit far off. So we're gonna basically start driving. We'll see what it does. We go into a hill, so I'll be accelerating after I get through this stop sign. Okay, here we go. Doing like quarter throttle, I'm not hard, hard acceleration, but that's about where we sit. Just set the cruise controls, keep the RPM somewhat steady. Our exhaust timing looks pretty close. So right now, all of them look pretty good. Still climbing the hill, running about 2100 RPMs. I had to slow down for a car in front of me. As you can see, after it warms up, everything seems to work properly. That is what I'm thinking. That's why I'm thinking it's the variator. Because um, those are, maybe the oil gets thinner, warms up, everything moves better. It's hard to say. But that's kind of what I'm, uh, where I'm pointing to right now. Again, I've uh, checked the wiring harness, the connectors, uh, didn't see any obvious damage. I'm going to reseat the PCM connector as well. I've swapped out uh, camshaft position sensor and the camshaft solenoid. Uh, no change, you're still with the same code. So now we're kind of leveled out, we'll be going downhill shortly. Okay, so I haven't started it, but I've got my screen set up. I want to see my variable valve timing output. Uh, duty cycle, I got the two intake on top, exhaust, so even with the engine off key on, we should get something. Uh, this is something that's interesting. 
a variable valve timing position for both intakes are uh, matching where on the 2011 it is not i also pulled up my fuel rails just so i could see it um we'll see all right let's see what happens huh So, right off the bat, these are staying fairly close to each other. That's something they weren't seeing. They were usually two or three degrees off on the, on the engine we're having trouble with. Alright, so we're going to take her for a drive. We're going to go open up the gate. And once it's a little warmed up, we'll kind of see what she's doing. Okay, so we're going to do about 45. We're going to kick it up to 60 and see how she looks. See what our variators are doing. See that they're varying. Both running the same. Yeah. So staying close together. You can see our intake timing. We're staying close together. It's fluctuating because they're fluctuating on the road. So. Alright, I'll catch up with you when we start leveling out. Okay, we're, gonna, we're starting to level out on our highway. Attention. We just want to get it, use this as a baseline, basically, and compare what we're seeing on the other one. Okay, this is the variator I just pulled off the 2012 Land Rover. And uh, just being real careful, pulling things apart to see if I can identify uh, any possible reason why this one's failing. And the first off I noticed is when I, I'll just show you, when it's sitting like this, let me get my alignment dial put in right. When I took it apart, before I loosened off the last screw, I noticed it was off center about like that, all the way around, all the holes. So I was like, that's kind of weird. These are tapered heads, so it should self-center and go right like that. So I loosened it off, centered it, snugged the, the screw back up, and it would go back to like that. So then I took that, loosened that screw off, put two other screws in. They tightened down like this. But then when I tightened down that other one, it would kick it off a little bit. So I'm kind of guessing I might have had a bent screw. It's kind of strange. So that's the first thing I noticed. Don't know if that's the problem. Second thing I noticed was inspecting this little dowel. And it doesn't look bad, but it, I mean, it's got some wear, but it was moving freely. So then I look at the place where it's supposed to go into, clean it off. And you can see there's a groove worn in there. And I can feel it with my fingernail. So I know on the Volkswagen one, that definitely was an issue. Having a groove. Um, it might have even wore down that edge there. You can tell. But it's pretty good. I didn't notice it when I cleaned it. I guess I should have paid better attention to it. So, this is a spare one I have. Off, it's actually off of our 20. This is off of the 2011. LR4. This is off my wife's engine that we pulled out of the 2012. So I pulled the screws out and they were all centered. I left one screw in there, haven't loosened it off, and you can see every one of them are centered. So that, you know, I'm going to pay attention to that when I put it back together. And then uh, we'll take a look at that guide locking pin. Well, after we took apart the variator from the 2012 and we found a lot of sludging and quite a bit of wear marks. So we decided not to even bother with it, and I ordered a new replacement variator, and we'll get that one installed when it shows up. Okay, sorry, just uh, UPS just dropped off the replacement variator. Here's our part number. So again, this is an intake variator for the Land Rover 5 liter. So I just got it installed. These are just finger tight. Uh, got all the timing marks lined up. Let's see that one. Right there. And we go down. Make sure. Keyway is at the 6.30 or 6 o'clock, I guess. 6 o'clock position. Again, we only did one side. We left this side assembled. And then, you'll be able to see that timing mark lined up. 
and I uh, reset the tensioner. So I'll go ahead and put tension on this, pull the tensioner, make sure everything looks good. We'll pull the cam locks out of the back and uh, pull the alignment pin off the crankshaft position sensor spot and the starter lock. And then we'll rotate the engine over two revolutions and test our timing position. So, all right, we're moving right along. I just want to, uh, we're pretty late in the evening. Only got another probably hour to work on this. So I'm trying to get as much done. We'll get this set. Um, I still got to put uh, the torque wrench on the can variators so I can tighten them down, tighten these bolts. As you can see, they're just hand, tight, hand tightened, not even snugged up. So I'll put the torque wrench on this one. Tighten this one first and uh, go from there. So hopefully this fixes our timing issue and this thing will be good to go. Okay, so we got everything. We got the timing done. We went ahead and uh, pulled the cam locks, rotated it around two times, checked our timing marks and we're right on the money. So what we're gonna do now is uh, get the covers installed Get the dampener pulley installed, get the valve cover on there. That way the engine's all closed up, no debris can get in there. And uh, probably won't finish it tonight, but uh, we'll see how far we can go. And then tomorrow we can keep working at it. All right, so we got the lower timing cover on, the dampener pulley put on, all the silicone torqued down. I still gotta put the dampener bolt, but we don't do that quite yet. And then we'll torque it down. I'm gonna call it a night. Uh, I'm gonna work in the morning. So after work tomorrow, we'll get the upper timing cover on and the valve cover, and then we'll just continue to put it back together. Jenna was down here keeping me company. So we'll see you tomorrow. All right, we're back down in the shop working on our Kaya's LR4. Uh, last night we came down, we only got an hour to spend on it yesterday. So we did finish putting the top cover on and the valve cover. So that's all torqued down, clean. We re oh, we installed the injectors, the fuel rail, ignition coils, and then reconnected the wiring harness and the fuel crossover tube. So that's what we're, where we're at now. We're ready to start putting this front end together. So the first thing uh, we're gonna put uh, the lock on the dampener pulley so we can torque it down. And then we'll put the starter back in and build up this front end. See if we can get it running. We got a couple hours here this evening. So uh, see if we can get it running today. All right, we got it all buttoned up. I drew a vacuum on the cooling system and held it. And uh, we got it full of coolant. It'll drop down some more. Uh, we're gonna, we got the battery connected. We are getting ready to test run it. Uh, got my scanner connected. That way I can monitor temperatures and I'll check the engine oil real quick on the dash, then we'll try to fire it off. And as soon as I fire it off, it usually gulps a little bit of coolant. So I'll go ahead and jump out and put some coolant in it. And then we'll probably drive around the property waiting for the coolant or the thermostat to open before we take it for a test drive. All right, let me get this thing started. Okay, so after several successful test drives, my daughter's uh, 2011 Land Rover LR4 is running well. Uh, we ended up, uh, just to recap, changed all the timing components, new chains, tensioners, and guides. Got it back together, uh, had some issues with uh, fuel injectors, so we ended up placing all four fuel injectors on the driver's side. I did a separate video on that, and then uh, we ended up replacing the intake camshaft variator on the passenger side, bank one, uh, due to getting an engine timing code. So that uh, seems to be fixed now after replacing that. We've had some good t test drives. So now we're gonna move on to other uh, things that need to be addressed. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.